Bible has this intriguing story of deceit, sex, and murder. This story has all the elements for Hollywood. This story illustrates how to harness the power of vulnerability, and it allows us to perform greater works. Let's pray. Father in heaven, be with us today. As, we, as your mind touches my mind, as we touch the minds of, of those who see this video, we pray for a simple, earth-shattering miracle of understanding and empowerment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In John chapter 14 and verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say to you, I am telling you the truth. He that believes in me, the works that I do, shall, be, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So the works that Jesus did, we were supposed to do the same work. As a matter of fact, he invites us, he tells us, he prays for us, he equipped us to do greater works. So my question is, why are we not doing greater works in Jesus? And I prefer that we need to be doing greater works of Jesus to complete, to finish the task that was given to us. Greater works starts with vulnerability. The Bible, being able to say, I need help. Vulnerability is being able to say, I need help. Taking the step to emotional exposure. Taking that step of emotionally remo removing everything and exposing ourselves. Taking the risk of saying, I am flawed. Embracing this risk the risk, the risk of uncertainty, letting go the control. Why? Because in taking the risk of exposing ourselves, this emotional exposure, we know intrinsically that we are worthy of love and belonging. We are worthy of love and belonging. Testimony, volume 9, verse, um, uh, page 189, summarizes it this way. Because this is so necessary for us to do greater works. It says, if we are humble, if you can go to the process of vulnerability and letting go the, the control, if we are humble, kind, courteous, um, tender-hearted and pitiful, there would be a hundred conversions to the truth where now there is one. So you see the sequence. It starts with being able to take the risk of the uncertainty of letting go of the control and then embracing God's love. Today we're going to discuss the concept that is integral to accomplish this greater works. Brynir Brown, in her book, um, Daring Greatly, grappled with shame, vulnerability, and connectivity, and worthiness and belonging. I want to show you the divine answer to this problem and how God intervenes, orchestrated a system where as long as we're willing to step out and say, I'm flawed, I need help, because of his love for us, he will then take over. And you can harness this power of vulnerability. 1 John 1 and verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that promise is there if we're willing to step forward and accept 
who we really are. God re requires that we confess our sins and humble our hearts before him. But at the same time, we should have confidence in him as a tender father who will not forsake those who put their trust in him. So it comes in twofold. Willing to take the risk, being vulnerable, exposing ourselves, and understanding that we have a tender father that is working with us. You can see both stories coming together, working together, both concepts going hand in hand, both sides of the equation coming together. Vulnerability, worthiness, and belonging. So here's the story. So there was this king called David. And David was a very successful warrior. And there's a time of the year when they, it's, this is written, by the way, in, in, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 11. And so there's this time of the year when, when kings go out and fight. The weather is con conducive for it, and it's the best time to fight. And so David sent out his armies, and he was alone. That's mistake number one. Why? Because he went out on his, ba his balcony and was looking over, and he saw this gorgeous woman bathing, completely naked. Now, a man is not supposed to be at home on his balcony at this time of the day. He's either out in the fields working, or he's out fighting, or he's too old to climb to the back. So it's just it's very safe and customary for a woman to be bathing at this time of the day. So. Every year in, uh, in David's um, head stood up, and he sent for this woman. And he had intercourse with her, and a few weeks later, she sent a message to him that she was pregnant. And so he panicked. He said, who is this, 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 this woman's husband? Sent for the man, took him back from the battle, and said, listen, I, I, you know, go spend a weekend with your wife. And he said, no, no, I can't do that. My, my fellow warriors are outside struggling, fighting, giving their lives to the country. And he slept on the steps in the palace. He refused to go home. So David sent back um, with the same man a message to, to, the, to the, the, um, the, the commander of the battle and said to him, listen, put this guy in the front of the battle, withdraw um, him, and, um, and don't, don't, don't give him any backing, don't give him any support. In other words, send this guy to die. This commander knew exactly what David was asking for. He read through the lines, and he did exactly the thing. Not only that fellow died, but there are others who he sent with them for battle. They died as well. And so I, I, I was amazed to see this man of God, this guy who God said, this is a man after my own heart, could sink to such depravity. Well, a prophet came to him, and a prophet confronted him and said, you are a murderer. And let me, I, I took this story to um, a prosecutor, an attorney, and I asked him, what kind of charges would be laid today in today's environment for something like this? And he outlined a, a set that was scary. He said, David would be guilty of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, rape, first degree murder, and in Texas, it's capital murder, conspiracy, conspiracy to commit murder, using government resources to conceal a crime, tampering with the evidence, racketeering, kidnapping, and it goes on and on. That's the real David. That's what he was guilty of. Vulnerability is integral to greater works. Vulnerability is understanding who we truly are and take the, taking the risk of not knowing who we are, but also whose we are. David read, wrote, 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Do I walk through the valley of the shallow of death? I'll fear no evil. David went into this knowing who he was and whose he was eventually. Um, who we are. Friends, we are sinful, helpless, and dependent. Council of the Church, um, page 48. We are capable of the worst depravity. That's who we are. We tell ourselves false stories about ourselves. And we have this false image of ourselves. It's one of the most pathetic things to see among my friends, now that I understand it myself. And I see the false stories I tell myself. I see people, my friends around me, the people around me, my patients, and the false stories they tell themselves. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yes, I say, in Revelation 3 and verse 17, this very poignant statement was made. It says, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. That's the story we tell ourselves. And God is saying, but do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Naked, whenever you see that sign, that word, it means full of shame. Brené said that in science we describe shame, blame, we describe blame as discharging shame. You walk around and you're blaming everybody for what happens around you because you're so full of shame. And discharging this shame through blame is all here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 17. But in understanding who we truly are and the depths that we can when we function from the limbic system, reacting instead of from the prefrontal cortex where we are in control of our faculties and reason controls our appetite, reason controls our emotion, when we all function from the, the lower nature, the carnal nature, the, the, the limbic system, we have this blind spot. But at the same time, we must understand whose we are and that we are worthy of love and belonging. We are loved and valued by the true and living God. We are created to be loved and pampered. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 and 4 said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With love and kindness, I have drawn you. That's who we are. We are his sons and daughters, being prepared to sit on the throne of God. It is important not to know only who we are, but whose we are as we face vulnerability. Jesus was willing to go to hell so that we could be with him in heaven. I just had some time, just had a chance to spend time with one of my sisters, who has, a, as a matter of fact, has an adverse childhood experience score of nine. She said, Errol, when I found out that God loves me, nothing mattered more to me in life. I could face anything after that. And then she said, when I recognized that God was willing to go to hell for me, that I can go to heaven to be with him, all my pain, my suffering, my sorrow, my heartache melted away. Um, so friends, we all have a huge blind spot of not knowing whose we are. God is love, is written in Steps of Christ, verse 10. God is love is written upon every opening bud. 
upon every spire of springing grass. Every time you see a beautiful flower, you understand that God loves you. I had a chance of visiting the Chelsea Flower Show in London. Acres of wall-to-wall, most beautiful flowers in the entire world. And only to think of this passage, to recognize that every flower here is God saying, Errol, I love you. So friends, step one of getting out of this is learning the real you. See who you really are, a vile sinner capable of the worst atrocity, but for grace, but for his love. David said, Behold, I was was brought forth in iniquity. I had a story about myself. My mother was in England, and my father was married to another woman. Um, And I told a story about myself for years that um, my father and my mother broke up, and she got so upset, so she left for England. That's the story I told myself. After about 40 years of finding my mother, I, I made a mistake of asking her this question. What year did you leave Jamaica? And when she told me the years, the year she left Jamaica and went to England, I found her in nothing in England. She lived six, for six years, she lived one mile from where she left me. I had to step back and find the real story about me, Errol, is that you were abandoned. You were thrown away. She did not want you. That's the real story. Well, friends, but that was only half of the real story. In high school, I came across this poem in a song by William Cooper. Can a woman tender care cease towards the child she bear? Yes, she may forgetful be, yet I, God, will will always remember thee. That's the other side of my story. Isaiah 49, 15 15 to 17 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the child of her womb? Yes, she may, but I, God, will not forget you. You are in the palm of my hands, and your walls are continually before me. Nothing happens to you, Errol, without my permission. That's the other side of the story, and that's the one that that I take to bed every night with me. Friends, um, our story begins to get powerful when when we acknowledge the truth about us, knowing who we are and knowing that God loves you. The second part of the story, friends, is to know God's pursuit, his love, the real story of deliverance. It, this is confession. This is forgiveness. This is restoration. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Walking away, understanding our adverse child experience score, and at the same time, understanding our fig leaves, the food, the sex, the degrees, the MD, the PhD, the land, the big house, the cars that we cover up, that side of our story. We have to be able to remove the fig leaves and let Jesus cover us with his fig leaves of love and mercy and grace. And friends, David came to the point where he could say, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous right spirit. And here's the good part. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted. So when you, my friend, understand who you are and whose you are, the blind spot is removed. You're willing and able to allow Jesus to remove the fig trees, fig leaves, and put on you 
his covering of his love, his righteousness. And then he power empowers you to go forward. You might hear someone. If you're not hearing the small voice whispering to you, you might hear someone who comes to you and says, you are the man. And your response to the small voice, your response to this person who comes and confronts in love, reaching out to you, will determine whether you have embraced vulnerability and can actually experience the power that comes with vulnerability. This is essential to be able to achieve greater works. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for your piercing arms of love to show us who we are and to show us how much you love us and how much you want to do through us as the Father works in us to do greater works. Make this happen, Father. We yearn to come home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.